but we're going to tie this conversation into what happens when you align your values and you don't have to compare yourself because you now have that confidence that you're living in the space on the path, on the journey that you're meant to be on and you have the support that you need. So yeah. I'm going to have you take the mic over for now. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So totally normal that we compare, right? It's a, it's a normal thing that our brain does. And yet I could not agree more that the more each of us can be grounded in who we are, aligned with our values, and really even valuing who we are as an individual, it allows us to not only release some of that compare and despair and looking at other people in that way, almost looking at others as a reason to feel good or bad about ourselves in relation to them, but it actually opens up a beautiful opportunity for us to really appreciate what's good in other people that might be different from us, right? And so it's kind of like this beautiful thing of not only can we feel great about us and end the compare and despair, but it opens up this appreciation of other human beings for who they are, which is just a beautiful way to live. Welcome to The Robin Graham Show, the podcast for purpose-driven women who want to achieve sustainable success without having to be on social media. Hey, beautiful friends. Welcome back to another episode of The Robin Graham Show. I want to read an excerpt from a book to you really quickly. It's called The Happy Mom Mindset. So maybe you're a mom, maybe you're not a mom, but everything I'm going to read and everything we're going to discuss with Molly Claire today is going to be so helpful, so useful as entrepreneurs, as business owners, or anywhere you are on your current journey and things that you're maybe struggling with, facing, but ultimately setting yourself up with that firm foundation so that the struggles don't come from a lack of confidence and instead spiraling out of control in comparison. So hold on to your hats because it's going to be a good one. All right. With that said, I'm going to read from the book. Comparing yourself to others or to an impossible standard is never useful. We usually compare ourselves and try to do it all because we fear that we don't measure up, but end up falling short of an impossible standard. Boom. Can we get a drum roll, please? And then... As you develop greater confidence and align with your own values, you'll be less likely to compare yourself to others. You'll compare yourself with you and create a life of constant personal development and internal fulfillment. Wow, does that sound like a little slice of heaven? <laughs> <laughs> All right, we're going to talk about raising your awareness today, folks. And without further ado, Molly Claire, welcome to The Robin Graham Show. Thank you so much. I am so happy to be here connecting with you and hopefully giving a little bit of inspiration to your client, to your listeners today. Yes, absolutely. So Molly, before we dive in, will you just tell the listeners a little bit about you and what brought you to this point of your journey? Yeah, so... Um, I am, I'm Molly Claire and I am the founder of the Masterful Coach Collective, where I help coaches, heart-centered coaches who are here building a business to make the world better, to improve people's lives. I help equip them to run a simple, profitable business and to be really effective at what they do as coaches. So um, what you read, of course, was an excerpt from my first book, The Happy Mom Mindset. When I started as a coach, I was working with moms specifically, helping them to navigate the unknown, the uncertainty, the overwhelm, these, you know, women that I could see and relate to, by the way, right, with, with really caring about doing a great job as a mom and yet wondering sometimes if they're really cut out for it. Um, so that was where I started my journey. And as I built my business, and as I helped um, other coaches along the way, and I can, you know, talk more about that or not, but essentially over the last 10 years, after building my business, I shifted into helping coaches to be effective, to, um, to be able to be successful as business owners. And I am just obsessed and in love with the work I do of helping women to be able to help others 
to change their lives. Mm, I love that so much. And I think, you know, we tend to live in silos often where, you know, we, we get so focused and inundated with our own problems, our own set of issues, and we forget that there's help out there for us. So I love that you're helping other coaches help other people because we need to create this, I think, almost solidarity in terms of it's okay to ask for help. It's okay to seek another solution outside of self. We can't do it all alone. I mean, of course we have God, but we need other humans around us as well. So I love that. I love the work you're doing and I commend you for everything that you're doing. And you also certify coaches as well, right? Yes. I offer a a master coach certification and it's a, it's a certification that's holistic in nature. And what I mean by that is we're not just teaching effective action strategies that you can do with your clients, or we're not just teaching about mindset or beliefs, um, but we're really, I'm taking into account helping um, coaches, healers to see each person as as a whole person, right? So everyone listening to this episode right now, you have pieces of you, you have ways of thinking, beliefs, mindset, you have emotions that sometimes we don't know how to navigate. You have certain habits, maybe habits you're trying to change. And you also have a nervous system that, you know, can sometimes surprise us when we have some activation or fight or flight. And I say all that because I think uh, for everyone listening here, if you've ever felt frustrated in creating change for yourself, um, my hope is that you can have a little bit of patience and experience a little bit more grace in the process of changing because we're complex as human beings. And it's important to understand all aspects of ourselves as we create change. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And, you know, we talk about mindset a lot, but when you think of, of, I like to use this example and I heard it from, I think Priscilla Shire originally, but she takes the soul and she says, it's your mind, it's your emotions and it's your conscience. And there's one, there's a fourth one in there somewhere too, but I don't remember exactly what it is, but it's funny how that is such a core of who we are and how our mind is working is going to influence every aspect, every outcome that we achieve or don't achieve. And when you were, you just mentioned the word habit. And I think this is a perfect tie in because as women, as moms, as entrepreneurs, just as women in general, we tend to have a habit of comparing ourselves. And I want to dive into that today. And listeners, I recently did another episode on comparison that I will link in the show notes, but we're going to tie this conversation into what happens when you align your values and you don't have to compare yourself because you now have that confidence that you're living in the space on the path, on the journey that you're meant to be on and you have the support that you need. So I'm going to have you take the mic over for now. (laughs) Okay. Yeah. So totally normal that we compare, right? It's It's a normal thing that our brain does. And yet I could not agree more that the more each of us can be grounded in who we are, aligned with our values, and really even valuing who we are as an individual, it allows us to not only release some of that compare and despair and looking at other people in that way, almost looking at others as a reason to feel good or bad about ourselves in relation to them. But it actually opens up a beautiful opportunity for us to really appreciate what's good in other people that might be different from us. Right. And so it's kind of like this beautiful thing of not only can we feel great about us and end the compare and despair, but it opens up this appreciation of other human beings for who they are, which is just a beautiful way to live. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Absolutely. And, you know, God created each of us uniquely. We're all so unique. We're all individuals, but we were all created in his image, which means there's something good about everyone. And I think oftentimes we go into that place of comparison, which leads to doubt, obviously, And when we're comparing, we're not seeing the good. We're only seeing the bad in ourselves. And I think it's important to get curious and say, okay, well, if I start to look at that as a good quality for them, where can I bring out a good quality in myself? 
And, Mm -hmm. and that comes from our values. What are we aligned with? Yes. And one of the things that I've done, so both in the book you referenced where, you know, work with moms specifically and feeling confident in motherhood, and also with my coaches who I'm helping to build their business, a, a core piece of the work I do is helping women to be able to say, who am I as a person, right? So for the moms, who am I as a mom? What does that mean to me? What are the gifts that I bring? What is my specific purpose in how I raise my kids? And the same thing goes for my coaches, my entrepreneurs, right? Who am I as a business owner? What are my strengths? Because I can't tell you how many times I've had coaches come to me wanting help with their business and they're wanting to build someone else's business, right? They come to me and they're so discouraged and they keep self-sabotaging and they're overwhelmed and they're frustrated. And as we talk about it, we realize they're not even really paying attention to who they are as a business owner, the type of life and business balance they want to create. And and that's where we get into trouble. And so the first thing I do with all of my clients, no matter what we're working on, is we say, hey, who are you as a person? What are your priorities? What are your values? And how do you make sure that you are building a life and a business, or in the case of moms, right, um, becoming a mom in the way that aligns with who you are? And it's, it's such important work. And I find for my clients, it becomes the thing that grounds them so that as, you know, they're building a business and they come up against doubts and fears, or they see someone else doing something amazing, it's a great place for that, them to come back and reconnect with self and say, this is who I am. This is my purpose. These are the gifts within me. And it actually allows a settling of those fearful emotions and allows them to make much more clear decisions about their business. And I would say the same is true for moms, Mm -hmm. getting out of that comparison and being grounded in who they are. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. So let's talk about values because I've had a lot of clients that come in and will do a values exercise and they've never done that before, Yes, which surprises me because that's something that I've done so many times. Mm-hmm. Not that I'm better than anybody else. That's not what I'm saying at all. It's just something I've been very curious about. And I happen to, you know, focus on that because I believe that when we look at our values, our visions, and our passions, and we have a Venn diagram, where those overlap is where we'll find our purpose, our contentment, mm-hmm. and, you know, what's going to fulfill us on our journey. So let's talk about values. So for anyone who hasn't mm-hmm. done their values or, who is curious and wants to revisit their values. Mm -hmm. How how do you suggest? Yeah, so the first thing I would say is that I think um, one of the things that really gets in the way of us looking at our values and identifying them is seeing values as something that's just bad or good, right or wrong. And so it's kind of like we have this idea People either have values or they don't. And we we almost have a very watered down view of values that just isn't very, I'm not sure the word I would use for this, but almost um, limits our expansion as a person, our ability to expand our, you know, our divine gifts. And, And so one of the things like what I do with my clients is one of the exercises is we have a list of different values, things we can value, things like ambition, things like integrity, things like connection. Um, and, and the list is, it's pretty long. I'm not going to lie. The list is pretty long. Right. (laughs) And, and one of the things that's crucial as all of you think about potentially listing out at so many different things that you could identify as some of your top values is that inevitably we're going to think that some of those values are more noble than others or better. So for example, if we look at ambition and compassion, okay, these are two different values and it could be easy for someone to look at this and think, well, I should definitely value compassion more than I value ambition. Okay, so this is an is one example, right? And there are many examples. But what I recommend is we drop the idea 
that one value is inherently better than another because it, it's just true that as as human beings there are certain things that we gravitate toward that light us up that are valuable and and when we can give ourselves permission to say what really lights me up is you know this idea of ambition that's when we can make space for all the things that are beautiful within that and all the ways that we can give to others. And it doesn't take away from certainly caring about people or feeling compassion for people, right? And so, so that's really step number one. Give yourself permission to drop the judgment and see what things light you up. Because I genuinely believe when we give ourselves that permission to say, this is something I value and I'm going to step into it and, and embrace it entirely, it actually allows us to do our most important work in the world. That is what is going to allow you to serve more people, to help others, to be an example, to be a light of expansion and goodness and all of it. I could just go on and on, but that's key number one. When you look at the different things you may value, drop the judgment and allow yourself to see what lights you up and trust that, that what lights you up is a part of your inherent gifts. Mm-hmm. Yeah, absolutely. And you said a couple of things there and I love drop the judgment and instead, instead get curious because the more curious you are about yourself and what you do align with, what lights you up, the more opportunities you're going to have to align with that. And then the other thing you said was values are not good or bad, which absolutely so true. And I think it's also important to note that we all have more than one. You're not, right. when you do a values exercise, you're not putting yourself in a silo to say, I have to be this. We have That's more right. than one. And I think over time, as we grow and we develop and we change, our values may shift too. We may have a value that is higher priority that was a lower priority and vice versa. So get curious and explore. So Molly, the one thing that I, I often tell people to do is, like find, you can just Google a list of values. I love, um, James Clear has one and he's kind of narrowed the scope down a little bit. So I love to refer people to him, but um, take take a look at that list and go through and, and maybe circle 20 that you feel yes. are you. Then yes. go back through because some of them may be very similar and get curious as to which one really applies to you and then narrow it down to 10. And then ultimately just keep narrowing it down till you get to like, three to five. And then those become your core values that you're not willing to waver on. And when you're not willing to waver on those, you're going to lean into them for decision-making, for relationships, and what you allow yourself to do, not do, the boundaries you establish for yourself. And the list just goes on and on. Yes. Yeah, absolutely. And I and I am a big advocate of limiting that list, like you said, just picking this many and then narrowing it down. Because I think that that discomfort of eliminating some of them, right? Because to your point, it's not to say these are the only things we value. And yet when we can, when we're willing to drop the judgment and say, these are the things I value more than these and release, release some of them, it does allow us to definitely have that more narrow focus and and sort of the foundations that we want to rely on, right? For those mm -hmm. those values within us. Um, and one of the things that I suggest in the book, and in the book, this is specific to moms, but I'm also going to say this absolutely applies to us as business owners as well, is one of the exercises I suggest in the book is making the list. And the list is this idea that, you know, as a mom, list out all the things that you think you're supposed to do to be a good mom, like everything, right? An exhaustive list. And then what you do is you, you sift through this and you categorize the things on this list to say, okay, what things on this list are actually someone else's priorities or value? Maybe the neighbor, maybe your mother-in-law, maybe who knows, right? And then what things on this list have I just never questioned how important they are? And then that third category is the things on that list that actually matter to you in a very deep way and are important to you in your role as a mom. And I think this same exercise can be applied in business, 
right? Like, what are the things I believe I'm supposed to be doing in my business? And Robin, like, you're a great example of this, right? With social media, like, oh, I need to post this many times a day, right? Who says? So, um, so I know, you know, you're a big believer in, in being really focusing on what matters most, but thinking about as a business owner, what is that exhaustive list? And then again, what are the things that you're just believing because this person or that person told you and what things on this list have you not questioned? And the beauty is in doing this exercise is we can really find out where, where we're going to shine, right? Like, what are the things I'm going to focus on? And I know for me and in both of those areas of my life, what I know is that as a mom, when I can love my kids, see who they are, care about who they are and, and value it, that's the most important thing I can do. And you know what? I may not always be great about keeping up on school emails or, you know, organizing, whatever it may be. Okay. And you know what? It's okay. I can figure that stuff out because when I am, am doing that thing that I know for me is most important, it's everything, right? And it makes up for the rest. And in business, you know, I would say for me, it's, it is really showing up for my clients. And it, it's honestly the same thing, letting them know I care about them and, and seeing the gifts within them as a coach. And as I teach them to expand their skills, one of the things I'm always doing is I'm helping them to see how the skill I'm teaching them, how, how they make it unique to them, how they bring their gifts and their intuition and their skill to what I'm teaching them and bring that out. Because when, when I can show them what is great in themselves and teach them to see what's great in themselves that becomes a superpower for them as a coach, right? And same thing for mm -hmm. my kids, it becomes their superpower. So, um, you know, all that being said, that's a great exercise for people to do to really get clear on what matters to them. Mm -hmm. I love it so much because we do get so inundated by what society tells us. And it's, you're right. I'm so, I'm so like, no, I'm not going to have social media be my priority. And that's one of the reasons, because I think we do tend to go down the con comparison trap more, or I guess more easy, more easy. How do I say that more, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, more e easily? And you, and then as soon as we do that, we lose sight of who we are and where we're supposed to be. And we're not meant to do everything the way everyone else does it. And we lose not only ourselves, but we, we lose our business too, because we're trying to mimic what other people are doing. And that takes away our own authenticity you know, our own uniqueness. And if we want to succeed, we have to differentiate ourselves. So what That's makes right. you unique? And that list of priorities, your values, those make you so unique and they will determine, they will help you de determine your decisions, which are going to influence your outcomes. So it's really important to have that, that basis. Um, okay, Molly, any last thoughts that you want to share? Oh my gosh, so many things. Um, you know, I would just say that, you know, what you were saying about social media is true. I remember this study showing that that people compare to people that seem to be above them or beyond them, and they feel bad about themselves. And when they see people that they perceive as beneath them or struggling, it doesn't have the opposite impact of feeling better. It actually just creates a sense of feeling bad for that person. Yeah. And yeah. so, and, 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 Maybe my last thing I'll, I'll offer up is to remember this, that when we are comparing to someone else, we are comparing their exterior, what we see on the outside of them with our interior, what's going on with us inside. And someone watching this interview right now, if they see the visual, right? Robin and I are here. We both have these like floral blouses on. I curled my hair today. Robin's glowing as always, right? And... We're doing a lot of great things. And guess what? Underneath and behind the scenes, we have all the emotions, all the fears, all the doubts, all those same struggles. So just remember that, that, that when we're comparing, we're looking at the outside of someone else and comparing it to the inside of us. And the more you can just attend to, who am I? How can I appreciate who I am? How can I build a business that amplifies my gifts? How can I be the person I am meant to be? It will soften that comparison and it will allow you to be a powerful force in this world. I am convinced of it. 
Mm, amen. I agree 100%. And I do want to circle back to one thing you mentioned before too, about the superpower. And I think, you know, when you do these exercises, you know, you make the list, you look at your values, something else is identify what makes you unique, whether it is through those exercises, or it's a completely different exercise. But especially if you're a business owner, identify what your superpower is. And sometimes you can't see it. It's like, you know, you can't see the forest from the tree. And that's where I think having a coach or a mentor or someone else to help pull all this incredible goodness out of you, because we get so inundated just with life, especially if we're moms and business owners, because it's just chaos sometimes. (laughs) But I think, you know, that is, that is something that is so incredibly important is identifying like, what is that for you? And I guarantee you, if you ask people like take a handful of your friends, family members, ask them for the words that they would use to describe you. And it's going to help you see, wow, wow, wow. Maybe, maybe there is something to that. (laughs) Yes. Well, it's true in part because who we are just feels natural to us. So yeah. the things that, that we may be great at, it, it just seems like no big deal. So absolutely, having a, having a coach, having someone that can see beyond what you can see, see that next level of, you know, version of you and, and distinguish that is great. And I agree. I've done the same thing. Even with people I work with, I say, hey, what am I good at? Can you please tell me? Because I think this is what I've said sometimes. I think I do something really magical with my clients, but I'm not quite sure what it is. Can you help me figure out what it is? So, yeah, I love it. And again, what you do with your clients all comes from those inner gifts and aligning with your values so that you're serving the people that you align with, that you know you can truly help and that you're fulfilled working with. So it all comes full circle. Um, Okay, Molly, where can the listeners learn more from you, follow you? or work with you? Yes. Okay. So you can find me at mollyclaire.com. Pretty easy. Just M-O-L-L-Y-C-L-A-I-R-E, mollyclaire.com. And um, you can find out information there about holistic master coach training, um, as well as a program to help coaches and consultants to create a program. So, um, and you can certainly follow me on Instagram. And I also have a podcast. So the Masterful Coach podcast is where I'm talking about being a phenomenal coach and really designing a business that is unique to you and supports your ideal priorities in life. So definitely check that out as well. Oh, and I have a free gift as well. So if you go to myperfectbiz.com, I have a seven-minute video training where I actually help you go through all the questions to say, this is what I want in my business. This is what I want in my life. This is how I ensure that these two areas are in support of each other. So it's right in line with what we've talked about here today. That's perfect. All right, listeners, I will put all those links in the show notes so that you can easily access Molly Claire and her podcast, which it is good. I I was actually interviewed by Molly not too long ago and I listened, you know, I had her in my ears for several days before the, the actual interview. So there's a lot of good information there. And I will put all of these links in the show notes. So listeners, thank you so much for being here. And if you know anyone that could use this information, please share it with them. The reality is you have a superpower and so does your best friend, but have they found it? So share this episode and maybe inspire them. Maybe you can work on these lists together. And if you'd be so kind to leave a rating and review, that's how I am able to get such great, such great guest as Molly Claire. And I would be so incredibly grateful for you. All right. Thanks friends. And I will see you all next time. And that's a wrap friends, a heartfelt thank you for being here. I know there are many other ways that you could spend your time. So I truly appreciate you joining me. If you enjoyed this episode and found the information helpful, please take a moment to subscribe and leave a rating and review ratings and reviews are how we grow and get amazing guests and how more people find the show. A kind review would mean the world to me. Oh, and don't forget to share the episode with someone that it will help. And let's connect. You can find me on Pinterest and LinkedIn as therobingram.com. And be sure and visit the website, 
therobingram.com forward slash resources for a plethora of resources to help you grow your business for long-term success. Until next time, remember to smile.